What's up guys, welcome back to The Educated Barfly. Today we are reconsidering the Ramos Gin Fizz. Um, if you guys have been following this channel for any length of time, you'll know that I did a Ramos a couple of years, a couple few years ago. A couple, maybe three. I don't know, a while ago. And the foam on my Ramos Gin Fizz wasn't very good. Uh, the Ramos Gin Fizz is supposed to have foam that sits well above the glass. There are bartenders that have competitions to, as to how far they can get their foam above the rim of the glass. Mine always sort of pancake out and sort of mushroom out a little bit. Uh, yeah, I've never been able to get that. I know you were trying for a, you're trying for like a little dad humor there and I didn't even, didn't even acknowledge it. <laughs> the thing is, is that I've never been able to get that like cylindrical foam that just looks like the continuation of a glass until now. So I'd like to say that I developed this kind of new, but I didn't really develop it new. The thing is, is that I went through a bunch of bartenders, uh, asked a lot of advice, talked to my, uh, at the time was uh, my general manager, Brian at Kohl's, and we kind of discussed like, what are the main points of the Ramos Gin Fizz? He showed me some of his things and I sort of bastardized it into my own sort of technique. Um, so this works every time, but it is very temperature sensitive. And so I need to get mixed in this cocktail. It is not a very complicated cocktail to create in that the it's very easy to put together, but uh, it's the shaking that's kind of the doozy. Uh, and that's the why the method it's, is complicated. What? The method is complicated. The method is complicated, yes. And it's a, it's a thorn in every bartender's side. You know, this is the type of cocktail that like when people get into cocktails, they really want to have this one. It's kind of seen as like sort of the mecca of cocktails, but Nobody wants to make it. All right, let's do it. So first thing we're gonna do is half an ounce of simple syrup. I don't know why I'm putting the simple syrup in first, but maybe it's just because. It's the cheapest ingredient. It's the cheapest ingredient. Three eighths of an ounce of lime juice. Three eighths of an ounce of lemon juice. And then we're gonna do a uh, half an ounce of heavy cream and two ounces of gin. I was supposed to do label out and I totally did back of it out, but it says beef eater on the other side. So we know that we're using beef eater. All right, then we're gonna crack our egg. I ain't got a good enough crack there. There we go. Ooh, this is a nice one. It didn't like shatter the way it does. And separate our egg white into this tin. The reason why we do that is so if we mess it up and get egg yolk in there. Or shell. Or shell, we don't mess up our cocktail, right? Um, oh, I'm gonna actually save this yolk to have a prairie oyster later. And then we're gonna give it a nice, hard, dry shake. So this is a cocktail you basically can shake for as long as you want because we need to hand whip the heavy cream that's in here. I'm not gonna get into the history now, but we're gonna talk about the legendary shaking technique that makes the Ramos so infamous. So you can shake for a good, long while. I am out of shape, my friend. All right. So I pre-froze my glass. And what we're gonna do is uh, put in about an ounce and a half of soda into the bottom of this glass. Then we're gonna take our cocktail and we're gonna throw it into the glass. And we're gonna throw this back in the freezer for 10 minutes. All right, let's take our cocktail out and see if it actually worked. So now what we do, we have our cocktail here. We drill a little hole into there with a straw. And then we just carefully add the rest of the soda into our glass. And behold! The Ramos Gin Fizz, perfectly executed Ramos Gin Fizz, I might add. Uh, let's not forget uh, the Piazza de Resistance. So first, a couple things for your Ramos Gin Fizz to be done. You wanna put a couple of drops of orange flower water. Just a, a few drops on the top for the aromatics. And the varnish does, and I like to do a little orange twist on the top as well. And then you have a very nice orangey Mm, yummy. Let's take a sip of this. Shall we? Just a small sip though. We don't want to ruin this. We kind of need that for the thumbnail. Ooh, 
Fantastic. So this cocktail should be sort of like an orange kind of creamsicle. You know, it's, you got your lemon and your lime, you got your orange kind of on top, and it just has this very kind of soda fountain-y, cream cynical-y kind of flavor to it. This cocktail was originally called the New Orleans Cocktail when it was developed by a guy named Henry C. Ramos in 1888, who owned a bar called the Imperial Cabinet Bar in New Orleans, Louisiana. And then he later opened a bar called Stag, and this drink became so popular that it actually took on his namesake and became the Ramos Gin Fizz. It is purported that, or it is reported that, this drink was so popular when it was created that it took 20 bartenders working simultaneously to meet the demand, and even then they failed at it. So the thing about this drink is that it is the bane of every bartender's existence. If you order it, most of them are gonna either say no or frown. And the reason why is because it is a lot of shaking. It, historically, it was said that something like five or six barbacks had to pass the tin around uh, to shake it, to be able to not only whip the meringue from the egg white, but also to whip the heavy cream into a solid enough state to get this lovely foam on top. Which actually reminds me, I'm helping some friends out with their Ramos right now. Thanks, Steve! Let's give it a nice hard shake for him. <laughs> hey, my smile is gonna give you a run for your money, buddy. All right, here you go, Vlad. And there you have it, the Ramos Gin Fizz. If you like our channel, please hit like and subscribe and check us out on Patreon and YouTube memberships. We've got merch, uh, so go to our uh, shop at theeducatedbarfly.com and also you can take part in our virtual bottle program. Uh, our virtual bottle program where you can uh, buy us some bottles of alcohol and have your name and shout it out in every video we use it. And I'll see you guys on another time.